This video is on enzymes. The most important thing about enzymes is the definition. An enzyme is a biological catalyst that is made of protein and like all catalysts, enzymes speed up reactions but they speed up reactions that happen inside the cells of living organisms. Enzymes are specific. That word specific is important. It means that they only work for a certain reaction. For example, amylase only speeds up the breakdown of starch into glucose, but it won't break down proteins. Proteins have enzymes called proteases that help to break them down. Enzymes have an active site. Active site is just a space on the enzyme, a certain shape on the enzyme, where the substrate fits during the reaction. Here you can see the active site is the same shape or complementary in shape to the substrate. The substrate needs to fit into that active site. The lock and key theory is the theory that we use to explain how enzymes work. The enzymes will fit together with their complementary shapes with the active site and the substrate joining together. Once an enzyme has worked, it is reusable. So once the products have been made, this enzyme can then be reused in another reaction. Enzymes work on substrates. So the substrate is the reactant in an enzyme reaction and they produce products. The products are just the chemicals that are present at the end of the reaction. Now we're going to talk about factors that affect enzymes. And we're going to talk about two factors. We're going to talk about the temperature and the pH. Remembering that pH is just a measure of the level of acidity or alkalinity of a solution. So because enzymes are protein molecules, the structure and the shape of the molecule is dependent on temperature and pH. If the shape changes, then the shape of the active site will be affected and the substrate will no longer fit into the active site. So here we have a graph showing the effect of temperature on enzyme activity. And you'll see on the x-axis we've got temperature and as we go along the x-axis the temperature is increasing. And on the y-axis we have enzyme activity. As we increase temperature 0 to 10, 20, 30, 40, we can see that enzyme activity increases until it reaches a maximum here around 40 degrees Celsius where enzyme activity is at its greatest. After that temperature, the enzyme activity slows down. So we're going to talk about the different sections of this graph, the first section increasing, the maximum and the decreasing enzyme activity. We can see at low temperature, the enzyme is inactive. This is because the enzyme molecules themselves are not moving very much, and so the rate of collision is very low. So we say that at low temperatures, enzymes are inactive. As the temperature increases, they become more and more active until about 37 degrees Celsius for the human body, the enzymes become very active and they are at their optimum temperature. So for humans it's 37 degrees Celsius but for different organisms it differs. We need to remember it around 37 to 40 degrees Celsius. As the temperature start carries on increasing we find what happens is the enzyme starts to be denatured. This is when the active site is changing shape and the enzyme and substrate no longer it together. Next we're going to talk about pH and enzymes and how changing pH affects enzymes. So we've got another graph here to show the differing, here we've got three different enzymes, one it's shown in blue, one in yellow and one in green and they're just different enzymes that work in different parts of the body. This one, for example, in blue, could be something that works in the stomach, like pepsin. 
and we know that the stomach has got a very acidic pH. So what we're going to talk about is the one in yellow, which is amylase, salivary amylase, which works in the mouth, in the saliva, and so the pH there is about 7. So that's this one in yellow in the middle. What happens with pH and enzymes is they also have an optimum, but this time it's called the optimum pH, which just means the best pH that they work at, and the optimum pH of enzymes differs. This one, amylase, salivary amylase, happens to be 7, pepsin is around 2, and other enzymes like trypsin is higher, 11 or 12. If we are outside the optimum pH range, so towards beyond 9, 10, 11 for salivary amylase, what we'll find is, again, the enzyme will become denatured, which means the shape of the enzyme will change, so the active site changes shape, and the enzyme substrate complex cannot form anymore. So that was enzymes, the definition, some keywords, and the factors that affect enzymes' temperature and pH.